What's going on, everyone? So we're going to talk about the Big Bang. Nope, not the one that was, you know, created everything. But uh, we're going to talk about the Big Bang in finance that occurred in the late 90s due to a period of financial re deregulation. Basically paved way for insurance, banking companies, banking holding companies to no longer be separate. There was uh, the Steagall Act was enacted after the Great Depression to keep everything like that separate to prevent any conflicts of interest. And then for whatever reason, right before 2000 hit, 1998, they went ahead and deregulated everything, uh, paving the way for bank mergers and the like to take place on scales never seen before. Now, before we look into Nico and the Salomon connection, and if you're not sure, Salomon Smith Barney is the underwriter for GameStop. Uh, we're going to take a look, brief look at Citigroup's history first, and then we'll dive into that. So take a look. Information about money is as important as money itself. A quote attributed to Walter Riston became an anthem for the economic revolution of the 70s. The introduction of the computer in the financial markets and advance in telecommunications changed the way business was conducted. It seemed fitting that in these new, sleeker, fast-paced times, the name Citicorp was introduced to the world economy in 1974. Two years later, First National Citibank became Citibank. The revolution in banking really took hold in 1977 with the bank's introduction of the ATM and 24-hour banking. The conventional wisdom was that customers wouldn't trade their friendly teller for a cold machine. The City Never Sleeps ad campaign and the blizzard of 1978 proved otherwise. Since everything was closed, it was very convenient to come here and get some money to be able to do something tonight. I've made a deposit, paid my loan, <laughs> and also found out the balance on my on my checking account. I think it's great. You can, you can uh, come in anytime you want to, get cash, deposit, whatever. 24 hours a day is great. Even in a blizzard, the city never sleeps. The city. Evolution replaced revolution in the 1980s as the bank signified its emergence as a global financial company. Overseas, the bank began what some might call its return to the future. As Walter Riston passed the torch to John Reed in 1984, a favorable political climate ushered Citibank's return to China. And in 1987, the collapse of the Soviet Empire and the fall of the Berlin Wall set the stage for a return to Russia and Eastern Europe. The 80s also heralded the most ambitious expansion the bank had ever undertaken in U.S. consumer banking. Almost 400 branches in the United States served Citibank customers. We have forever changed the way customers bank is the refrain of the 90s and both time and technology once again played a major role in these changes. During the 90s, global expansion continued with the opening of new overseas corporate branches and financial centers, including East Berlin, Moscow and Hanoi. 1998 marked the 100th country celebration with the Citibank opening in Kiev, capital of Ukraine. The 90s also saw the information age take flight with the emergence of the Internet as a financial tool. City's Internet presence embellishes a 24-hour global banking network that includes the international city card, city phone banking, the largest Visa franchise in the world, and direct access PC banking. In 1998, in another bold stroke, John Reed of Citicorp and Sandy Weil of Travelers Group forged a merger that overcame the hurdle formerly posed by the Glass-Steagall Act, which had kept commercial banks, insurers, and investment banks separate in the U.S. since the Depression. On October 8th, the official merger date arrived and Chairman and Co-CEOs John Reed and Sandy Weil were on hand to greet customers and employees at Citibank's 399 Park Avenue branch. It's like the start of something uh, big. Starting merger. something new and big. Two years after the merger was announced, John Reed retired with Sandy Weil at the helm as Chairman and CEO. Citigroup stands as the clear leader in financial services, not only in the United States, but around the world. Word up. Anywho, so Nico Securities. In 1944, Nico Securities began 
Um, I'm sorry. Nikko Securities began in 1920 as the securities division of the Industrial Bank of Japan. It was incorporated as the result of a merger of Kawashima, Kawashimaya Securities Co. Ltd. and Nikko Securities Co. Nikko, like other leading Japanese securities firms, suffered losses in the 1990s because of the underlying economic weakness in Japan, along with the corporate racketeering scandals going on at the time. By early 1998, Nikko was reeling from the impact of its tarnished reputation and sanctions imposed on it by the Ministry of Finance. Now, back in the United States at this time, as the Japanese financial market lay in turmoil, there was a round of consolidation in the financial services industry in the United States. One of the most active participants in this arena was the Travelers Group. Under the leadership of the acquisitive Stanford's uh, Sandy Wheel, this firm had purchased Salomon Brothers in 1997 and merged it with its Smith Barney unit to form Salomon Smith Barney Investment Bank. The Travelers Group acquisitions were not limited to the United States as it sought, as it sought out opportunities globally. Citicorp had established a significant presence in Japan in the 10 years prior to 1998. Regulatory constraints that were only lifted in 1998 had prevented Citicorp from also building a business in other aspects of wholesale banking, such as debt and equity issuance, as well as mergers and acquisitions. Now, debt and equity issuance is like uh, IPO, initial public offering, much like what we see with GameStop and, and stocks we trade today. The, the articulated strategy would be to use Nico's local knowledge and linkages in conjunction with Salomon Smith Barney's global presence and financial expertise to take advantage of the perceived opportunities presented by the Big Bang. Now, the Travelers Group did acquire a 25% stake in Nico Securities. So at this point, Travelers Group, which was basically formed into Citigroup Global Markets, now has Salomon Smith Barney and Nico Securities, and the Travelers Group merged with Citibank. So Nico Securities Co. and U.S. financial conglomerate uh, Travelers Group plan to forge an alliance that will result in travelers acquiring a 25% stake in Japan's third largest brokerage. The announcement Monday by the two firms marks one of the most candid reactions to date of the wide-reaching effects of the government-initiated Big Bang financial deregulation, which is expected to tear down traditional practices and sentiment within the domestic financial industry. Unlike the Merrill Lynch, uh, Yamashi tie-up, the Nico Securities Citigroup Salomon Smith Barney joint venture was met with skepticism. I, I, I bet I bet there was because both of these companies were coming from tarnished reputations in the late 80s and the 90s. The primary reason for the skepticism was the gap in corporate culture that existed between Japan and the Western uh, states or the Western side of the world. Some bankers insist these mergers and alliances provide an easy way to achieve a distribution system and a corporate client network. Salomon Smith Barney claims that its coverage in the wholesale banking sector is now unrivaled by any Western firm and is forecasting profits in its first year of operation. But these alliances face at least two problems. One is the Finnish management challenge of combining Japanese and non-Japanese corporate cultures. Although the NSSB, Nico SSB, and by the way, NSSB is just referring to Nico Salomon Smith Barney, Venture has tried to tackle this by appointing co-heads of every department and introducing a single pay scale. This has not been achieved without considerable friction. So getting started. So just as Nico SSB started operations in the spring of 1999, Japanese industry was in the process of reshaping itself to take advantage of the opportunities afforded by the Big Bang. In 1999, there was more than 1,800 mergers and acquisitions with a total value of over 85 billion, a dramatic increase over the 885 transactions worth a total of 40 billion the year before. Additionally, in 1999, in excess of $65 billion in equities and convertible bonds were issued by more than 60 companies. In this environment of expanding deal flow, Nico Salomon Smith Barney had two advantages, superior expertise in complex financial transactions and strong ties to inter uh, international institutional investors. These advantages quickly revealed their worth. In its first year of operation, Nico SSB underwrote such high-profile projects as the initial public offering of Oracle Japan, a deal which led to a secondary offering of $9 billion in 2000. In addition, Nico SSB worked on Ripplewood's purchase of Long-Term Credit Bank and the initial public offering of Nippon Telephone and Telegraph, or NTT. This led to success as they already had ties to institutions and global investors, and then they also had the complex financial transactions uh, expertise from Nico. 
Then came imitation. By 2001, other U.S. investment banks were rumored to be considering such ventures. As the Financial Times put it, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, even in investment banking. Financial Times, 2001. It is a testament to the impact that Nico Salmon Smith Barney, the hybrid U.S. Japanese investment bank, has had on the local market that rumors regularly surface about similar tie ups between overseas houses and Japanese counterparts. Successful imitation was a potential threat to Nico SSB's business model. I don't think so. But, anyways, here's the Exhibit 1 timeline of events in history of Nico Salmon Smith Barney. 1987, Primerica purchases Smith Barney, Harris Upham and Co. Commercial Credit purchases Primerica. July, of 1993, Primerica acquires retail brokerage and asset management operations of Shearson Lehman Brothers for American Express combined with Smith Barney. December of that same year, Primerica acquires Travelers. Smith Barney becomes a wholly owned subsidiary of Travelers Group. 1996, Primerica operations consolidated and renamed Travelers Property Casualty, taken public. November 11th that same year, Big Bang was announced. 1997, Travelers purchases Salomon Inc., formerly Salomon Brothers, and forms Salomon Smith Barney Investment Bank. 1998, April 1st, the Big Bang changes go into effect. June 1st, Nico announces JV, joint venture, with Travelers Group to serve corporate and institutional clients with services to include sales and trading, corporate finance, capital markets, transactions, and research. August 28th of 1998, Travelers Group provides capital of 213 or 217.3 billion yen. And then Nico Securities would also purchase between 10 billion yen and 50 billion yen of Travelers shares on the open market. October 8th of that year, Travelers mergers with Citicorp to form Citigroup. Salomon Smith Barney becomes the investment banking arm of Citigroup. Now, 1999, Nico SSB is incorporated. March 1st of that same year, Nico SSB starts operations. March 28th, Citigroup increases stake in Nico Securities to 20.7%. 2000, May 1st, Citigroup's SSB acquires Schroeder's PLC. PLC establishes foothold in the European market. 2001, in December, after the 11 attacks, Nico City Trust and Banking Corporation Incorporated by transfer of 50% outstanding shares of the Nico Trust and Banking Corporation to Citigroup. How about that? Now, 2002, GameStop IPO launched on February 5th. I want you to look at this chart real quick and look at the leaders, the ranking leaders for common stock and equity in all categories in 2001 and 2002. I'm sorry, this is just 2002. So January 1st through December 31st, 2002, look who's number one, Nico Salomon Smith Barney. Number one, ranking for global debt equity and equity related. That same year, Citigroup, Salomon Smith Barney. U.S. debt and equity offerings that year, Salomon Smith Barney. Japan common stock on equity linked, Nico Salomon Smith Barney. So they were number one in every area by, you know, a substantial margin, 3% here, you know, uh, about a percent there. 3% here, percent and a half there. So they had a global presence. They had tarnished reputations inside the company. I think Travelers Group is one of the most damning entities in this market because they have everything in it. They got Salmon Smith, they got Nico, they got, you know, <laughs> Lehman Brothers, everything. So it all seems to tie together in some, you know, circle jerk of a way, but it looks to me like as far as technology is concerned, it's playing a big part in this manipulation. Um, seems as technology progresses, so do these schemes to take advantage, and they're all split and grouped together in different fragmented pieces all over the world. So it's a rabbit hole, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this.